Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to uh, the Essex Cricket Virtual Members Forum. And um, a welcome to all our panel members uh, this evening as well. We have a, a rather large panel for you this evening, uh, starting with uh, Chairman John Farragher, Deputy Chairman Peter Northfield, and Chief Executive Derek Bowden. And then we have Head Coach Anthony McGrath, uh, we have our Vitality Blast captain, Simon Harmer, and club captain, Tom Wesley. So having got all that out of the way, um, let's move on to uh, the questions. So we started off really with some questions about crowds. Um, obviously, quite a few people are, are, are writing in to see if they'll be allowed to come in and watch any cricket this year. So we sort of section this off, starting off with the Bob Willis trophy, really, and the Red Bull cricket. So this uh, question from Lee Collier, uh, does the apparently successful trial of letting spectators into the Oval give any hope that something similar might now be possible at Chelmsford for the Bob Willis Trophy? Or is the latest assessment still as gloomy as the one we were told at the previous members forum? And, and along the same lines, um, uh, Chris Trier was keen to know if there are any spectators permitted to attend um, the, the, the Kent match and similar messages from Roy Thompson, Mark Wallace, Peter Howes. So I think probably the best person to kick off this one uh, will be our chairman, John Farragut. John, can you... Okay, uh, yeah, fine. Thanks very much, Mike, and good evening, everybody. Um, right, the situation is the, uh, the, the trials at the Oval, for example, uh, were received, um, and they were pretty good. Things went fairly well down there. Um, the problem that's facing cricket right now is we are very much governed by what the government, uh, what the government guidelines are. At the, at the moment, they're talking about no crowds into stadium before the 1st of October. Uh, and these trials were really, along with some other sports that are being trialled as well, just to get an idea and put a case to the government as to whether or not we can bring cricket back safely into the grounds. Now, I think if we're perfectly honest with ourselves, and we said last week, the likelihood of cricket being played at Chelmsford, certainly to start off with in the Bob Willis Trophy, is very unlikely. Um, that we have a number of very sort of, not to say serious, but some uh, concerns around the ground and our stadium in particular, where we will find it very hard to guarantee the health and safety of everybody who comes into the ground. And as much as I would love to see people in the ground at Chelmsford, the first and foremost, we have to be certain that the health and safety of everybody coming in there is protected. And right now, we can't actually guarantee that we can give that commitment. Um, we have a number of pinch areas around the ground where it would be very, very difficult to uh, socially distance anybody who was there. There are areas of the ground uh, which are out of bounds for anybody other than those actually in the, in the playing side, i.e. the coaches and the players. There are various areas of the ground which no one is allowed into, uh, and that includes all of the staff at Essex, unless you're actually you know, in the playing side, the coach, the physio, and these people who are essential for the game itself, no one else is allowed in there. And that further restricts our ability to move people safely around the ground. So at the moment, um, the only possible other way that might come is if we are asked to participate in a trial. Uh, but I, I think that is, I've got to be honest with you, I think that is unlikely. And so the gloomy message that someone said that, I, that we put out last time, I'm afraid is still with us. And I think it is unlikely, certainly for this first game against Kent, there will be no, no, no one admitted um, into the ground. And it is likely that that is going to be the situation right through the whole tournament. Now, if that changes for any reason or there are uh, further opportunities to, uh, to, to, you know, to make a change, then obviously we would let everybody know. But I have to be honest with you, right now, I don't think we will have people in the ground for the Bob Willis Trophy, unfortunately. But that's the situation as, as we sit here right now. OK, um, thanks for that, John. Um, uh, let's just look at away games then. So... Um, uh, is there any possibility that spectators will be allowed into the matches at Hove and Arundel? And if so, will Essex members be eligible to apply for tickets or will they be reserved for Sussex and Hampshire members only? Uh, that came in from Lee Collier. 
as well. So um, I think uh, Derek Bowden, Derek, um, our chief exec, I think what, what's happening at other grounds around the country and also that specifically where we're playing? I think in, in the case of, of Hove and Arundel, it, it's highly unlikely that there will be crowds. Um, you know, Sussex, we know, had a, a virtual forum yesterday and it was announced that they wouldn't have crowds for the Bobby List uh, competition. Um, so Sussex, Sussex is a no and I think Arundel is a no. Um, there's a potential, I guess, if uh, Surrey were to have another pilot um, and therefore have a crowd with the Bob Willis, um, which is by no means guaranteed, but if there's a possibility, if that were the case, it may be that some of our members could attend. And those are details that have yet to be finalised with, uh, with ECB. I mean, I think if, if grounds did open up, um, there would be a, some reciprocity in terms of members from both counties being able to, uh, to attend those games. Um, but to answer the question, I think in the short term, the answer is sadly no. Right. OK. And uh, following on from that, um, Derek, then we've got questions from Mark Wallace and Mike Stringer around reciprocal arrangements at other grounds. So this is, uh, for example, attending non-Essex matches where, you know, say maybe at the Oval, um, you know, and do any other counties have a policy on this or um, uh, I think don't do members priority and are the counties working together indeed on, in these difficult mm. times to try and come up with any sort of Mike, policy? Mike, I think you'll find that, look, in terms of our members being, being able to go and watch games, you know, not involving Essex, the, I think they have to say that is not going to be the case. If, if that were to be the case that some grounds were able to admit a small number of people, uh, and, I, and I'm not saying that's likely, I think that's very unlikely, but if that was the case, the, the priority would be given to their own members. There's no way they're going to allow or invite uh, members from other counties just to come and watch some cricket. And, and it's perfectly understandable that they're going to give the first option, if that was the case, uh, to their own members. But I, I really think people need to understand that I don't see, in terms of what's happening with the government right now, I find it hard to believe that they are suddenly going to encourage and bring forward uh, the original date, which was the 1st of October, for having people into stadium. I think it's highly unlikely. We've already seen there's a concern around, isn't there, that, you know, the COVID instances of COVID um, it is opening up and is, you know, increasing again. Now, I can't believe that suddenly uh, Boris is going to suddenly welcome everybody into the stadium to start watching cricket. I mean, wouldn't we all love to think that was going to be the case? But I don't see it happening. So the, the likelihood of our members being allowed to go to other grounds to watch cricket is, is remote. In fact, it's probably non-existent. Right, okay. Yeah, but to answer the question, Mike, I think in terms of the way that the counties are collaborating, there's a great deal of collaboration between counties, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the crowds are highly, highly unlikely. Um, hence the, the comment about reciprocity. I think if there were crowds, um, then there would be open-minded approaches from the counties because we are, we're being very collaborative. But yeah. each county will want to put its members first, and, and indeed they should. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Right, a question from Alan Chapman regarding it's actually regarding the the final, the the Bob Willis Trophy competition final date. So um, he's saying the the ECB website is vague about the date of the Bob Willis final. Uh, would you have a precise date? Uh, um, I think because he's looking to book a holiday and doesn't want to miss it. Of course, since we're bound to be in it, so. Um, <laughs> Derek, do you know anything on that, or John? Yeah, the latest position on that, we talked about it at lunchtime today, actually, when we had a, a, a weekly CEO's meeting with ECB. Um, at the moment, the Bob Willis final is scheduled for the first week of October. Um, that may change, um, depending upon who hosts the final. It is now quite likely to be Lords, although a week or so ago it was more unlikely to be Lords. Uh, and if it weren't Lords, it would be the, uh, the team that gained the most points during the competition would host the final. But the feeling at the moment is that Lords are, are more open to the idea now um, and that it is currently scheduled for the first week of October. It could move um, and conversations are ongoing with Sky uh, about broadcasting that final. But that's the plan currently. But uh, I, I certainly couldn't guarantee it would be the end of the first week of October. Okay. Right, well, let's uh, just move on away from Bob Willis, uh, just for looking at T20, because obviously as some people are, are writing in, members saying um, some members obviously don't have interest in that, and um, but others do. And um, so Mark Wallace uh, 
again, um, will members have priority? Should there be any possibility of crowds coming or are we at this stage still looking at it? this as highly unlikely? Well, I think uh, in terms of is the T20 tournament going to be open for, uh, for crowds? Um, I think that is still highly unlikely, personally. Uh, all the indicators appear to be that you know, crowds won't be around. Of course, if things change, and let's hope, you know, we can all be optimistic and hope that they do, um, then yes, we would obviously make a, a preference to our own, to our own members first. Um, and I'm, it would be lovely to think that we might be, we might be having a conversation like this in two or three weeks time. Uh, but I think to say right now, is it going to happen? I think it's unlikely. Um, of course, our members, you know, they're the most important people to us. And our members would get priority on tickets. You know, that would have to, if there was an agreement that we could get X number of people into the ground, yes, then yes, our members would, would get priority, of course. Okay. Okay, the, the next one, we sort of largely answered, I think, and Andy Bright um, has sort of looked in saying, what's the, what, the rationale for no crowds? Obviously, in the past, he was pointing out some of the other forums we've had, we've been trying to be positive to say we might be able to get some people in. I think we've largely covered it, but he does raise the interesting point about the financial side of it as well as, you know, is, is it as much the financial side behind being able to get anybody in the ground or is it no. just the biosecurity? No, it's not. The, it's got nothing to do with the finances. Um, we are governed, you know, we have to follow government guidelines on this and, and, in, and in turn follow uh, what comes out from the ECB. And so at the moment, this is all about, you know, we are not allowed to have people into the ground. Now, if that changes, then we would do it. If we were allowed to, and we could make it work, then we would make it happen. Uh, so I'm not, I wouldn't bog this down with, is it because, of, you know, we're not interested in, you know, spending some money. That's not the case at all. If there was any chance of playing cricket in front of members and a crowd at Chelmsford, we would definitely do it. No question about that. And we would find a way of making it work if we were given that authority to do so. So it's got nothing to do with the finance at all. It's all about the regulations and the government guidelines as to what we can do. But for, and the other final, I've said it once, but I can only repeat it. We have to take the safety and the health of people attending the ground is, is our first priority. And unless we can guarantee that everybody will, be he will stay healthy and fit, then you know, we have a duty not to put people at risk. And that would always be our first priority. Right. Uh, and okay. include our legal responsibility. Well, and quite right, Peter. And we have a legal responsibility to make sure we look after everybody to the very best of our ability, uh, anybody who comes to the ground. Of course we do. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Um, we're getting a few questions coming in, which uh, thanks for those already. I'll be coming on to them after we've um, finished the pre um, the pre answers or the pre questions. So um, now we move on to a completely different subject, but one of which we've had a, a fair number of emails in. So bear with me while I just read um, some of these comments out. This is all to do with membership fees. So David uh, Bristow said. Um, now, I've paid my membership fee as usual by direct debit in January and won't have any cricket to watch. Will I get a refund? Uh, best wishes for what's left of the season. Um, Godfrey Mather, similar. Will there be a refund of 2020 membership fee? If not, will members receive discount or free membership in 2021? Uh, and various other similar messages. Mark Jackson, Tim Armand, uh, David Watts, CM Wood. Um, and uh, Bob Downer has actually raised an interesting point as well about whether there's any legal responsibility um, regarding um, refunds, uh, or, yeah, legal responsibility on the club. And, and before I sort of hand over to, to Peter Northfield, we'll hand him the googly on this one, um, uh, I want to reference Charlie and Sharon Wilson's lengthy uh, query on the subject. Um, maybe fill in that the club uh, could have been a little bit more proactive um, referring to previous forums where they felt that maybe we hadn't addressed that um, uh, adequately and, uh, and, and and just saying that hardship cases only will be considered maybe maybe not acceptable. So um, uh, Peter, um, you know, recognising that the club members be unable to attend any live games, uh, what options do the club intend to offer members in consideration of their financial contribution through the 2020 membership fee? And that's yeah, thanks, Mike. 
Um, just to say, it was an incredibly difficult decision that we took to say that we wouldn't be refunding this year. Um, you know, it was enormously uh, challenging for us to have to come to that. But at the end of the day, the club is in straight into uh, survival mode. And what we've got to ensure is that when we come out of our survival mode, that the club is still viable, healthy, that we can still challenge for all the uh, competitions that we enter, that we've got a, uh, an adequate squad to do that, and that we have, have still got something to offer these wonderful members that we have at Essex. Um, the, you should be receiving by now uh, your membership packs for this, this season um, uh, and you will find in there a summary of the benefits for this year, for 2020 and additionally what we're going to do uh, for, for members in 2021. Um, and just to remind you that in 2020 you're going to have access to all uh, games via live stream uh, that assumes um, that, uh, that we can do it uh, in, in conjunction with uh, teams when we play away. Um, we will have exclusive member content within that streaming. Uh, there's going to be a prize draw for every, every home game for a pair of blast tickets for next year. Um, there's going to be a thank you pin badge. There's going to be discounts offered uh, in the Essex shop on certain items. Uh, and, and we're going to acknowledge the hero members on a, on, a, on a thank you board, which will be placed at the ground. And of course, your name will go into the yearbook because there won't be very much else to put in there. <laughs> um, I think the, 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 the big news is that for 2021, uh, we're going to be offering effectively a 20% discount on membership fees. Um, that's 10% off the current rates uh, and prices will be going up next year. Now, obviously, that, that, that will only apply to those people who are members this year. Uh, you will also receive complimentary guest ticket for each day of the championship and one-day cup uh, played at the, uh, at, at the county grounds. And we will treat you to a meal and a drink in the members' restaurant uh, or, or the Dug Insult uh, Pavilion on one day of the championship. Um, there are other arrangements for the Premier members that they're going to get upgraded. Life members are also going to get complimentary passes to the, uh, to the uh, uh, Scrut and Bland Premier Suite. And if you were a new Life member in 2020, well, that, that's, uh, th those benefits that you would have enjoyed this year roll over to next year. Plus the Eagles Club, which is the Young People's Club, uh, complimentary membership will be offered in 2021. So, I mean, it is, it is a pretty good package. Um, and I know it doesn't make up for not being able to see cricket, you know, because we all want to get down there and support the boys and, 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 and get behind them. But we made every single effort that we can. Um, we have no income coming into the club at the moment. Um, fortunately, uh, the ECB have coughed up what they, what they would use to pay us this year. Uh, and I suspect that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have had the West Indies and Pakistan playing test cricket over here. You could say that in a way that has saved cricket. Um, we, we are in very desperate times, but we're going to come through this. We're going to be stronger at the end of it. And we can only do that with our members. And we are eternally grateful for their support. Um, we recognise that some people's personal circumstances might have changed as a result of COVID. Uh, and immediately after this, this uh, broadcast, I think something's going up on the website that, that uh, uh, tells people how they are able to get a refund if, if their situation is such that, uh, uh, that they feel it's necessary. I don't know if anyone else wishes to add anything to that, but I think that's, in a, in a nutshell, what we're doing for our, for our beloved members. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. No, that's, that's very good. And I think you hit on it well there in terms of you know, the, the club recognises the importance of our membership. You know, they are, we are very fortunate in having such a loyal membership base uh, and we respect that immensely. And th their support through this year, which is uh, you know, something that none of us have ever experienced before, and their support in helping us get through this year financially uh, is, is so important to us. And we thank them for that because without their, without their continued support this year, uh, the losses that we are we are going to make this year, we certainly will be making a loss this year, 
uh, and but we are working extremely hard to make sure that is that that loss uh, is as small as possible. But you know, ha having or knowing that we have the support of the membership, uh, that's a big help to us. And uh, and for that, we are eternally grateful. And it means that your club uh, is able to come through this period, and hopefully, when we get ready for the start of next season, uh, we will be up and running and in a very strong position to keep going. Because at all times, we want to make sure that this is, uh, we are the sort of employer of choice. We want people to come and play at Essex. We want people to become members. We want sponsors to be here. And we, are, we have a, a, a driving force that wants to be successful. We want to win competitions. We're going to win competitions. We invest very heavily. And this is what we call as one team, uh, one Essex, one team. This is what we are. And, and together, we will come through this period. And we will go on to further success next year. We will have success. We're very confident that we're going to have a good run this year. And so we hope that you as our members will see you know, the benefit of whatever success we are able to achieve this year. And you will know that we will be more than ready for next season when it comes. So thank you for your support. And we do appreciate that. And uh, you know, long may that last. And, and can I just also thank our commercial partners and sponsors who've stopped yeah, I mean, this has been uh, amazingly supportive given given where their businesses are. So we are delighted that they have stuck with us. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, look, um, we've got players and coaches and uh, I don't think Ronnie has joined us yet, though. But um, uh, let's move on to, we've got some questions already set, but there's quite a few coming on the Q&A as well. So I'll try and get as many as those up there. But let's start with... Um, uh, uh, probably with you at NC to start with, young players and, and Tom maybe as well. Um, this is from Andy, Andy Bright, you know, all, all the members of Essex want to win games, but um, it's suggesting maybe that uh, we've got a great chance to look at young members of the squad without fear of relegation with an eye to the future. So, um, yeah, how, how do you answer that one? Um, yeah, well, we've got... Uh, as everyone knows, uh, a very good youth system and uh, people have seen young players break in to the first team for the last four or five years really and that won't be any different this summer. Obviously we're without um, Dan Lawrence at the moment who's with England, we're without overseas players so obviously our squad's slightly reduced but I think in a way that's exciting. It, it allows uh, myself, Tom and Simon in the T20 to have a look at younger players We'll need the whole squad because games are coming thick and fast. There's not much time in between games. So um, that means that the younger guys are going to get their opportunity. So um, I don't really want to pick out one or two because I think we're going to you know, have to use the squad um, you know, in its entirety, really, through the competitions. OK. Uh, Tom, have you got a view on that as well? Yeah, I, I'd just like to echo uh, what Mag said. I, I don't want to pick out individuals, but when, when we came back after this lockdown period, I was, you know, I was blown away by the talent that we have at Essex. Um, like, it, it would be unfair just to name one or two. I think obviously a couple will feature early on in these early games, um, but it's going to be a it's going to be a squad effort in order to, you know, hopefully win that Bob Willis Trophy this year. Um, we've got a good stock of young bowlers. We've got a good stock of young batters. So, you know, we we don't want this just to be a, you know, a, a golden era for a, a few years over the last four years. You know, we want to extend this. And it's exciting to see some of the young talent that we have. And, you know, perfect. Although, you know, at Essex, we look to win every single game we play. You know, this this year, it does give us an opportunity to have a look at them and see, see how they cope. <laughs> A level to first team, how they cope with the pressures of that. Um, so for me, it's, it's a win-win situation. We get to see where some of our youngsters are at and also push to win the Bob Willis Trophy. Right, okay. All right, um, on um, and before going into some of the other questions that are asked before, I think there's a relevant one um, now that's just come up, which is uh, really on the plain side, how are our preparations going? Um, how are we approaching the, you know, the shortened season any differently and how are we going to prepare for T20 given that our last Red Bull game is not long before the, the T20 starts. That's coming from Mike Stringer. I'll just uh, the first part of that, Mags, because actually I think Mags 
you know, he deserves a lot of credit. Him and his coaching staff have put a tremendous shift in the last four, four or five weeks. Um, we've condensed a, pretty much maybe a, a six week training phase into a four week training phase. The coaches have worked double sessions. They've been in the morning, in the afternoon. Um, for the first couple of weeks, we could, because of the COVID-19 protocols, we could only come in one-to-ones. So we had done most of our work either in the morning or the afternoon, but they stayed there the whole day. So in terms of the preparation for it, it hasn't been ideal, but I think the, the effort that the club have put in and the coaches in particular have meant that we're up to speed. It would have been nice to have obviously had a few more practice matches, but we've had good volume in terms of nets and we did get a warm-up game down in Canterbury earlier on this week. So on behalf of all the guys, I think, you know, there's some, there's some selection headaches for myself and Max, which is exactly what we want this time. And ideally, it would be in April, but it's, it's in the start of August. But there's a, there's a lot of people putting their hand up that want to play for Essex and do well for Essex. Um, it, it, with regards to the T20 stuff, which will take place in a month's time, that's where Harmy will take, take over. But I think everyone is sort of ready and raring to go. Yeah, just just add to the preparations with T20. Obviously, we haven't got the fixtures yet, and we kind of know when it's scheduled. So, prepping for T20 is going to be tough because we're going to be playing probably the day before, if not two days before our first game. So, it's just a matter of um, you know guys being flexible when we train. Uh, we'll obviously address the first red ball games for a couple of weeks, and then guys who are not in the team and squad will shift a little bit of focus to one day cricket but I think everyone has got to appreciate it's not a normal season we can't have guys coming in and out of the ground practicing we've only got one lane in the indoor school um, so it is a little bit tricky uh, there's restrictions in overs and how many overs younger bowlers can bowl so it's going to be difficult for myself and Tom and, and Harmy with selection but um, given the year we had uh, we've had sorry I think we're just you know, appreciating that we're getting some kind of cricket in, really. So we're, we're going to have to kind of be flexible and go along with it and, um, you know, just really try and be logical and use a lot of common sense, really, when it comes to players' well-being and, and injuries. Yeah. OK, Thank, thanks, guys. A um, few questions coming your way um, now, Simon. Um, firstly, uh, from Anthony Mercer, um, can you uh, give us an update on your uh, um, fitness and also from Richard Jude? Um, what are your reflections and thoughts about the balance of the white ball side this year? Um, injury wise, uh, I didn't play the sort of warm up game against Kent as a precautionary measure. Um, there was a possible abdominal tear, but things have healed pretty quickly. So, um, unless there's a freak accident between now and Saturday, touch wood, uh, all should be fine. Um, and in terms of the sort of white ball squad, um, I think Mags and, and Tom covered a lot um, of it. But at the end of the day, we've got to fit a lot of cricket into the, the next six weeks. Um, and as with COVID and, and the business side of things, everybody's in the same boat. And that's no different with us. Um, I don't think there's going to be any county that's going to have an unfair advantage. Uh, most of the counties have been sort of stripped down uh, because of the biosecure bubble with England. Uh, a lot of counties are missing players. So, um, and as Mags and Tom alluded to, you can't have players coming in and out of the ground. So the rules are the same for everybody. So we all be in the same boat. And as professional sportsmen, that's what we need to do. We need to be able to adapt. We're only going to have a few days to move between four-day and T20, but um, those are the cards that are being dealt, and it's going to be the counties that sort of deal with that the best that will be successful. So that's what we'll be looking to focus on. Um, and I think as a squad, we've got an extremely talented bunch, and that's a credit to the youth system. And the reason that things like the youth system are so strong in Essex is because um, of the sponsors that we have on board and, and the money that comes into the club from, from the members and, and other sources. So um, we've got a really strong squad and, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to put our best foot forward uh, come beginning of September. 
Okay, thanks, Simon. Um, next question for you as, as well. Something came in beforehand, which from Bob Westaway. Uh, apparently, Michael Vaughan suggested on Test Match Special on Monday that the England team's only weakness at the moment is the spinner. Am I right in believing that Simon Harm would become available to play for England in 2021? No, unfortunately, that's uh, not the case. Uh, the visa situation is such that um, I can only apply to for indefinite leave to remain after 10 years. Um, so, yeah, it'll still be a while before I'd be eligible to play for England. Okay, thanks. Okay, I've had a couple of couple of people asking about um, second eleven cricket, uh, Billericay or elsewhere. Uh, is there any prospect of that this year at all? I'll try and I'll try and answer that. Uh, it's very difficult. Um, we are trying to get some games on. I mean, we, we haven't got enough players to get two teams out. Um, we had a game at Chelmsford on Monday, which was uh, part of our academy, plus the guys who weren't at Kent, who played a uh, Hertfordshire 11. But because of the protocols and COVID rules are very different for um, domestic professional cricket and rec recreational cricket. So... The grounds have got to be fit for purpose. Um, people who are coming in and out to play against us have got to go through various checks, etc. And of course, it costs money to put games on as well. But because games are going to come thick and fast, most counties won't have the staffs uh, and players available to, to put second team cricket on. So it is very, very difficult. Um, we are trying to look at joint games, as I say, with the academy and and the, the guys who are not playing for us. Um, but we've got to have enough guys at the ground because if there's concussion or someone goes down with COVID illness, we have to have people there to replace. So it's going to be very, very difficult to get other cricket on. Um, we are trying as much as we can to get our guys to play club cricket when it is safe uh, at the clubs. Um, but it won't be second team cricket as we, as we know it um, from previous years. Okay, and then Simon mentioned that <coughs> strength in our you know, young players uh, coming through in this uh, on a similar vein, really. Um, Max, the, um, uh, what's the direction of Colts cricket and county age group programmes, you know, like Eagles Nest in a post-COVID world? Um, I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, I know that... Um, the, the youth cricket, they are trying to get games on. I don't know the exact schedule. Um, I don't think guys will be going back to school till till September. So again, I think it won't be as we know it, but we, we're trying to get as much cricket as possible. Uh, we have had academy guys training with the first team, which has been superb, which they wouldn't normally do. Um, but the, there is some games coming up, but it's, it's kind of, very different to, to what we're doing. So um, I know Dan Feast and Barry Heim would probably be able to answer that better than, than I would. Okay. Um, okay. Derek, do you have any update on that one at all? Or? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't really know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with Mags on this, actually. I think um, there, there will be limited opportunity to play cricket you know, at, a, at a competitive level. Obviously, there's recreational cricket taking place, but um, the stretch and, and strain on, on staffing, as well as the grounds actually configuring in, in a way that enable us to play will make it very, very limited. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got a question that came in beforehand um, directly to, to Tom, actually, Tom, uh, from Steve Wilkes. Um, uh, apart from the field at Taunton, as a batsman, what does Tom Westy think about the general standard of pitches in this country? Oh, good, good question. Um, I think um, obviously that yeah, that Taunton Taunton wicket was was pretty disgraceful. It was I think you had Alistair Cook and certain senior guys saying that was one of the worst wickets they've batted on in their entire career. So if you take that out of question, you know there. I think it has been quite challenging. I think at Chelmsford in particular has been quite challenging for a batsman. But I think, you know, collectively, collectively we buy into that. Like we, we, as long as we're outscoring the opposition, which 
correct me if I'm wrong, Max, I think we did it every single time first innings at Chelmsford last year. You know, we give ourselves the best chance to to win games of cricket. And it, ha it has been challenging, but as a batting unit at Essex, we, we accept that. And as long as we're winning games of cricket, we don't mind. Um, I think traditionally around the sort of county circuit, there's always been grounds that have have been probably slightly more favourable for the seamers or they've done a little bit. But equally, there's always grounds that, um, you know, as a batsman, you can you can cash in at. Uh, a couple that spring to mind that have generally been batter friendly are obviously the Oval at Surrey and probably Edgbaston at Warwickshire over the last few years. But obviously, I, I might, I don't want to come across too biased as a batsman, but, you know, I, I would like the wickets to be flatter. But personally, from my point of view and, and Essex's, batsman I think as long as we're winning games of cricket that's all that matters so some of our averages probably have taken a dip over recent years it's not as flat as it used to be at Chelmsford when I first got there but you know we're winning trophies and winning games of cricket and that's for me all that really matters personal pride and egos of their averages can go to one side as long as we're winning winning trophies um so yeah, that there is challenging wickets as as you'd expect around the country, but there are also a couple of good ones. It just means that you have to knuckle down and and try and cash in when you do get a good one. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, a question, maybe for you, Derek, possibly from John Hollington. Um, this is the coronavirus and uh, impact on player contracts. You know, will the, will the coronavirus have any effect on player contracts? It will have a, uh, an impact, I think, across the game in terms of what, what counties can afford, yes. Um, it would be interesting to see throughout the summer which contracts are renewed and which contracts are not renewed um, because the pressure on finances in 2021 is going to have a, you know, a major impact, we, we all think. Um, so, yes, I think it, it will have an impact on, on player contracts. Specifically for Essex, you know, we know who we wish to sign. We've, we've issued letters uh, to everybody that we wish to sign and offer a new contract to. Um, and that's been in discussion with with Tom and with Max and others. Um, and we're in, a, I think, a relatively positive place, to be honest. But uh, I think a number of counties are indeed planning for the worst. It will be tough. Hmm. OK. Um, question from uh, Lee uh, Gambardella. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, we should make an observation on the, um, uh, the live stream. Um, apparently, the LinkedIn work for the first day and a half. So um, he's going to be pretty gutted if the same thing happens uh, in, in our um, opening match on Saturday. So are there any assurances that we can give uh, him that, that our live stream is going to be working well? I think speaking on behalf of the commercial team, we had this conversation a couple of hours back. I think we, are, we feel we are well prepared for live stream for both the Bob Willis and the Vitality Blast. Um, obviously, the first four days will be interesting because it's a new venture for us. Um, we weren't responsible for the uh, for the streaming, obviously for the Kent friendly match, um, but we are quietly comfortable and quietly con con convinced. I think that we will be able to offer a good product for both forms of cricket. Yeah. Good. Yes, I've just had a message in from uh, somebody in that uh, team who's making <laughs> sure that it actually was Kent and not us, and uh, without. <laughs> <laughs> Our stream has generally been pretty good over over the last yeah. couple of years, I believe. However, and we do obviously want other counties streaming to be very good because we'll share it if we're playing away. So, uh, yeah. and there's a there's a commitment I know from ECB to provide resources as best they can and to share best practice. So there are a number of counties that, that will undoubtedly produce a very very good product, and we'll be one of them. No okay. pressure. <laughs> while, while I've got you, Derek, um, another one for you. Um, from Keith Schilling, um, is the uh, crowdfunding scheme still active and how is it going? It is still active um, and, and to be very honest with you, I, I've not checked for the last week, um, but certainly last week it was six and a half thousand pounds. Um, but the crowdfunding scheme is, is still up and running live on the website. Yeah. Right. It, look, it looks like Keith, Keith might be prepared to put something in the meter. Then. Excellent. <laughs> It'll be old. <laughs> Coins, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen many of those these days. <laughs> um, okay, all right. Uh, just just one or two um, more general um, questions as well, really. Which is, well, we, we've had a few more coming in while we've been talking cricket around around membership and 
comparing what we're doing to other counties and maybe even to other sports as well. So I can't really go through all of these. I mean, if anybody wants an official answer to some of these longer uh, questions that have come in, then maybe uh, send an email in or, or, or uh, we'll, we can maybe come back to you with, a, with an answer direct. But I mean, in terms of uh, other counties, how do we um, compare, if you like, with, with options for for members, I know the, the, the demographics are very different for different county cricket clubs in terms of memberships. So I guess it's it's not easy to compare. But I also know that there was, you know, there was some effort to try and coordinate between the counties. Derek, you've alluded to that. Um, mm. I wondered, you know, is there is there some comfort that we can give or some message we can give out to to people, you know, in terms of you know how are we comparing against other counties? I think that the, the number of counties, to be very honest with everyone, the number of counties that are not offering a refund full stop is very limited. Um, a number of counties, despite agreeing otherwise, have gone down the route of offering you know, a donation first um, and then perhaps a, uh, a refund. Um, the issue, I think, is, is really more focused up for us in terms of the share of your income that comes from membership. Uh, a number of counties have very low levels of membership. Um, and therefore the income and, and the hit they would take if those memberships were refunded is actually pretty small compared to us. Um, we have a very strong membership, a very good membership and, and quite a high level of membership given the, uh, the size of the club and the size of the ground. Um, so for us to offer a refund and, and, and risk that money would have had a really detrimental effect potentially on the business. Uh, whereas for other counties it will have probably, to be fair, a minimal effect. That's which is right. one of the reasons we took the decision for, for there to be no refund. John, do you want a, a view on that? No, um, I think Derek's covered that very well. I mean, we are, you know, we have, a, you know, compared with most of the other counties, we have a large membership base and we're, we're very fortunate on that. And as I said, you know, we are looking that we're, you know, we are likely to make a loss uh, this year and it would be made an awfully lot worse uh, if we, you know, if we were starting to refund all of the memberships, that would make, that would be a huge hit on the club. And that would really hit the bottom line for us. So, you know, that's why we, we are so grateful that, you know, the, the, the majority of the membership want to stick with us. They want to be members of this club. And long may that continue. And we do fully appreciate that. And hence, the, you know, we're looking at things that we can do next year uh, as a thank you. And I think, I think we've been very fair in what we're trying to do and what we are offering uh, next year to people. So, you know, let's look forward. Let's be positive. Look forward... To next year, um, get through this year, and let's look forward to next year. Things will be better, and and we'll be on the charge again. So, you know, let's go with it. But yeah, I think Derek's covered that, you know, very well. No problem. Okay, um, David Self has made an interesting uh, point as well here. So actually, is there a means by which the membership fee can be eligible for gift aid status, such that the club can boost the overall income? Um, have we got it? Anyone sure. given? Um, the answer is no to that. Okay. We're not just a charity. We're not a charity, are we? We're, so I don't know if there's any way around that. Is there at all, Peter? There is no. no. Right. Okay. okay. Not possible. Um, and Neil Hornsby has just asked, you know, how big is our membership base compared with other counties? Let's see if my <laughs> support team can can via the hotline can give me an answer on that one. Um, Romans around, isn't he? It's yeah, we, we had 3,889 members. Um, uh, has anyone got a view on how that compares with other the, counties? It's, well, it's, we can tell you that we know that the likes of Surrey are large. They have a big membership base, but don't forget that is because they're a test match ground and most of the people, or a lot of the members there are members of Surrey because it entitles them to test match tickets. I mean, that's one thing. Um, but I don't know of many the other. Yorkshire has a high membership rate. We, we accept that. And Lancashire is pretty good. But following on from that, there aren't many more that have a, a better membership uh, than us. I think the last time I looked, we were fifth, I think. Fifth, yeah, there we are. So, you know, that tells you how powerful we are, you know, from a membership basis, that to be fifth out of 18 uh, just shows what a great membership we have. Um, so yes, that's why, obviously, as Derek alluded to, that's why the you know the membership income is so important to us, and it's a big 
you know, it's a major part of our income. Uh, and without that, we, the club would, you know, would seriously suffer. No question. Okay. Right. Well, actually, um, we have um, uh, just having a quick look at any other things that I think uh, we haven't answered yet. I think if there's nothing, um, if, if someone's asked a question, they feel like they haven't had it um, properly answered. Um, there are one or two that are more comments and observations, if you like, but we'd be happy if you wanted to send an email in to get a more specific answer. Um, so I'm just looking out to see what else is coming in at this point in time. So um, let's have a look. We have got a question on finance coming in. So what's the latest assessment as to the effect on, on the club? And I know we did give something out last week at the forum. Um, but basically, is there going to be a problem with viability? Um, I know that the ECB has advanced funds, um, but I understand this is money the club would have got. You know, is the ECB going to release additional funds? Well, they won't release additional funds this year. We, we should know more about the, the financial landscape next week. Funnily enough, there's a whole game meeting at which ECB will cover um, in, in outline, I think, the... Uh, the potential finances for 2021. A lot will depend upon the completion of the Pakistan uh, tour, the uh, hopeful you know, completion of the Australian tour, uh, and therefore the broadcast income. Um, so I think come the autumn, October time, we will have a clearer picture from ECB on the finances for 2021. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the club is concerned, um, looking ahead at, at, the, at the going concern, we are a going concern. Um, and albeit we'll, we will be making and there's something remarkable happens at, at quite large loss next year. Um, we will obviously still be here come the autumn of next year. Okay, good, thanks. I had a, a question from Kevin Mansell that a lot of people have asked down the years, including myself, where is Irani? Um, any, anybody, any idea? Uh, well, with regards to the night, where is he in general? Yeah. But I mean, no, it... Uh, we were expecting Ronnie on tonight. I guess something's probably happened on his business front. Uh, he's a busy guy uh, in, in, on his you know, nine to five life, if you like. And I guess he's caught up somewhere. Otherwise, rest assured, he would have been here. Uh, as, he, as we all know, Ronnie likes to give his opinion as well. And we miss it. Um, but yeah, so rest assured, unfortunately, Ronnie's obviously been waylaid and can't make it tonight. And uh, I'm sure he will send his apologies next time. Okay, couple of couple of questions for cricket. More, more <laughs> put my teeth back in. More uh, cricket questions that have come in actually. So, from Mike Stringer, uh, who do Tom and Simon think will be our biggest challenger in the red and white ball competitions? Tommy, you can start if you want. <laughs> uh, um, well, obviously, it's, it's the last few years a big competitor of ours has been Somerset, but they're obviously in a in a different group this year, um, the West group. So, but within within our group, there's obviously a few sides that are made up of division one clubs and a couple of division two clubs. So I'd probably say, you know, probably the first two games are massive games for us. Um, Kent performed, you know, very well in division one last year and Surrey obviously won the championship in 2018. So without, you know, taking any opposition lightly, I'd, I'd probably say, you know, Surrey are, you know, are a big competitor of ours. We have good rivalry with Surrey anyway, having us won it in 2017, them in 18, and then us again in 19. So probably off the top of my head, I'd, I'd say Surrey, but, you know, um, every county is a threat. So we have to be, you know, mentally up for it and, and you know, and give it our all in order to make sure we do try and win that Bob Willis trophy. Over to you, Harmi. Um, yeah, I would go with Kent. I think they probably the county in our group that hasn't had as much disruption as the other counties. Uh, Hampshire going to be missing Liam Dawson, James Vince, Fidel Edwards, Carl Abbott. Surrey are um, an injury-stricken outfit at the moment. Um, and they're also missing Mornay Morkel. You can't get over because of the COVID thing from Australia. Um, I think overall, Lancashire is going to be um, our other finalist. Um, I think they're the only county who hasn't really um, been laid off or furloughed. They've been training throughout. Um, so yeah, I think they'll be quite strong in the four-day stuff. And then in the T20s, 
um, I think is anybody's game. Um, it's obviously going to be a shortened competition. It's not going to be the usual 14 games. So um, I think it's anybody's for the taking. OK, thanks, guys. Um, something from Mark Wallace. Said, are, the, are the club going to have any regular evenings like uh, the, the, the through the 90s, 80s, etc.? And have we got a, a date for the final, um, the final one? I think the 10s. Derek, do you know uh, what's the plans on that? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we want to continue them. I mean, there's no definitive plan at the moment, but they've been a great success. So we want to, throughout the, the season and, and throughout the winter period as well, we want to carry on with these evenings um, because they've been very well received, for sure. Yeah, good, good. And, and um, another question is coming from Phil Eastie, um, completely different subject. But how much is the financial situation going to affect uh, the ground development? question it's on hold it's the short answer um, you know we need to work our way through uh, covid um, and post covid um, before we really can look at uh, investing money in, in bricks and mortar at the ground there's work that we have to do in order to comply with safety standards um, and we've been doing that and continue to do that um, next season we should see uh, rivergate finally open it's now completed but won't be open this this year Obviously, the new floodlights are in um, and bits and pieces of other work have happened around the ground. But in terms of the redevelopment, I think it's logical to say it's, it's very much on hold at the moment until we've uh, seen our way through the, the crisis. OK. Uh, right. Um, I think probably it'd be a good idea now, maybe, trying to sort of move in towards the, uh, the closure of the meeting. Maybe um, to go around uh, you know, Mags, Tom, uh, Simon. Just from your perspective, um, you know, what, what, what are your plans now, really, for, for, for the season? Well, um, I suppose our plan is to win every game of cricket and hopefully win the, the Bob Willis Trophy and retain the T20 Championship. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we, we had a media day this morning and Simon and Mags and myself, we had to, we had to do a fair few interviews and I think... As much as you know, every every time we put on an Essex shirt, wear an Essex cap or helmet, you know, we we try our best to win every game of cricket. That's that's a non non negotiable for me, and I know it's the same for the other two. Um, but you know, for me personally, it's, it's just I just looking forward to enjoying cricket. Um, you know, I've played cricket every summer since I was eight years old. Um, I always play to win, and we've been very successful at Essex over the last few years. So. We are going to be super competitive and try to win every game. But we also, you know, we're going out there to enjoy our cricket and, you know, to, to entertain, even though there won't be crowds there, which, as you've all touched on uh, through this um, forum, you know, I, I've always said in every interview, I feel very lucky to play for Essex because we are the best supported county in the country in my eyes. You know, we play away games at... Uh, away county championship games around the country and there's a handful of spectators in the, in the crowd whereas at Essex we've been very fortunate for a number of years now to, to turn up on day one and there'd be 1500 2000 people more sometimes um so even though we we won't won't get to entertain in front of a of a of a big crowd at Chelmsford you know hopefully with the live streaming we can still put in some fantastic performances and Hopefully, Harmy can still get his 60 first class wickets in the year. Yeah, I think from my perspective, um, I think Tom's covered everything cricket related in terms of what we're going to set out to achieve as a team. Um, but I think that it's quite exciting time for, for Essex County Cricket Club with the amount of opportunities that are going to be available to young players. Um, I think... A lot of players wait four or five years before getting an opportunity. And with the success that the first team has had, um, those opportunities normally wouldn't sort of happen um, as quickly as they have. So um, for, the, for the members that are quite active on social media, I implore you to please um, give them a chance and be patient with them because they're definitely not going to be the finished article, but I can tell you that they're going to try their bloody hardest. So... Um, I think it's quite an exciting time and it's going to be interesting to see if, if um, they sink or swim. But uh, I think 
it, it'll show how healthy the club is in terms of its um, stable and, and what we've got. Yeah, just to add, I mean, in terms of a plan, I mean, we've got one more day of training and then it's over to the boys, really, to perform. But um, I think, look, everyone's delighted that cricket's back on, first and foremost. I mean, as John mentioned before, what we've seen over the last few months has been absolutely awful around the country. So we're just delighted to get at least a few weeks cricket. The guys were in brilliant shape in March when we came home from Abu Dhabi and everyone, not just players, coaches, members, everyone at the club were looking forward to defending both our uh, trophies. But uh, in the short um, season we've got, um, you know, we just really want to bring a smile back to everyone's face, faces, really. The guys during lockdown have been superb. Um, the club have fully supported the the players through lockdown, which has been excellent. So I know that the players are really wanting to put a show on for, for the supporters and members. We know that people are not going to be in the ground. So through streaming, radio and, and other platforms, hopefully, um, you know, we can put a smile on everyone's face. And as Tom and Harmy have both, both mentioned, whatever team we put out, you can guarantee that everyone will be giving 100% and wanting to win games of cricket. Um, so, you know, of course the plan is to win every game, but, um, you know, we, we're just very, very grateful that cricket's going ahead and we hope we, hopefully we can complete the season with everyone safe and well. That's a good, that's a good finish off there, Max, because I think there'll be, you know, around the country, there'll be 17 counties all having conversations similar to us in terms of, but their conversation will be how on earth are we going to, when we come up against Essex, how, you know, how do we beat this crowd? I mean, that's you know, everybody's m much more nervous about facing us. When I talk to the other chairman, they all want to know what the, you know what the magic ingredient is here that we're all puffing because uh, they would like to have some of it because they recognise that this is a really special club, and we do things. We go out, you know, we always play well. We give it our best shot, and we never actually just roll over and let ourselves be beaten. We never give up. And that's a great thing about this club, that we actually play, we play to win, and that comes out in the way we play the game. You know, we are very competitive, we never give up, we fight all the way through, and we play exciting, challenging cricket as well. And that's the thing that other counties look at us, and they and believe it, they do, they study us hard, and they want to know how they can be like us. And long may that continue, because we want to be the leaders in the pack. We want people looking to play as well as Essex. And while we're there, we, you know, providing we keep that same tough mental approach that, that Tom and, and Simon have sort of installed into people, then we're going to be OK. And that's what we have to keep doing. Play the Essex way and we'll do well. So go for it, guys. Thanks, John. I was actually just going to come up back to you to sort of wrap up, um, uh, wrap up the meeting, actually. Um, uh, I just passed on something from Lorna Piper who said it's not a question. Uh, but thanks to all for, for tonight and all good wishes to Tom and Simon and the team. We'll, we will all be cheering you on even if you can't see us in person. Um, so thanks for that, Lorna. So, uh, right, I think we've, uh, we, we've, um, we've, we've come to our allotted time and I think we've pretty much dealt with everything, one or two little things that we might want to get back personally on. Um, John, did you want to just wrap up, give us any, any final comments? Yeah, I mean... Well, first and foremost, thanks to everybody who's come in tonight. It's, it's, I think these forum have been a real success. And, you know, we, we will make sure we keep these going uh, on a regular basis. But I think that an opportunity for us to talk to the membership and the membership to talk to us uh, is, is vital. And long may those chains, of, you know, that line of communication keep going. It's important that we communicate regularly and the, the Zoom uh, sort of, process allows us to do that and so long may that continue but no thanks very much it's been good uh, very informative we're all excited now about the weekend uh, see the first game see our first victory come up against those boys from Kent we'll teach them a lesson uh, and that'll be the start of our climb up through the Bob Willis trophy so but no thanks to everybody who's come in and to the guys on the panel thanks for your time and uh, good luck and we'll talk again the next form we'll let everybody know but um, you know probably Set me a few weeks' time, Mike or Pete, but we'll set up a date and we'll get the next one, possibly perhaps before we go into the T20 
or if we've got any other news that we feel we need to communicate with people, we will do that. But certainly we'll get together again, probably, uh, I would say, just before the start of the T20 tournament. But uh, anyway, thanks everybody. Have, and go say the main important thing to everybody out there is stay safe, take care. And look forward to talking again very soon. Thank you for your time. Yes, and if I could just add one thing. Um, if we'd have been having this in early April and COVID hadn't been here, you think what we'd be looking forward to, defending both titles, coming off exactly. the most wonderful um, summer of cricket last year with England as well, you know, and, and actually cricket has really suffered because of, because of this. So it has. Down to Essex now. We're gonna but win we'll it. be back. We'll be We're back. Gonna, we'll be back. We certainly will. Okay. So thanks very much, everybody.